Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the VIS Professional League as we kick off our second and final semifinals here for the night. It is going to be an exciting one with Rogue going up against Necrolite. You guys definitely are in for a, going to be a really thrilling best of five series. I'm your host, Dragonborn, and joining me tonight, it's the nominee and welcoming back for the first time this season, Tasty Bacon. Uh, definitely one of our longest running casters here on the VIS League. Uh, of course, it's exciting to have you back, Tasty. Yeah, absolutely looking forward to it. Wanted to get back in right before the finals, be able to jump on in at some of these incredibly competitive matchups. Yeah, it's always yeah. fun to see what these teams bring to the table in VIS Pro. And it's been very competitively. Day and I are going to be breaking down, though, real quickly where we've come so far as we take a look at the bracket in case maybe you haven't seen the past streams. This is where we are. It's been a 16-team single elimination tournament, and you can see a, a lot of upsets happened. NRG falling the Tribe early on, Misfits Infinity Rebirth, lots of back and forth. But you know what? The teams that have gone all the way, Immortals, last, last night defeating Echo Fox, in a stunning four games out of the best of five, they are going to qualify for their second VIS professional finals ever. And then tonight, we will find out who will be uh, showing for the first time, actually, for their first VIS professional finals, Necrolite or Rogue. Day, this is, uh, this is definitely going to be an exciting one, mostly because of how well Necrolite has played. Typically, we would say that Rogue as a VGA team would have a little bit of a favor uh, and probably be the, the, you know, the guy's favor to win this but Necrolite has just been playing phenomenal games this entire season. Yeah Necrolite has really been playing well I think definitely getting Lightning T uh, over on their roster was absolutely huge for them but looking at the match history we do have to take into consideration that Necrolite has gone four and two to get this far whereas Rogue has two owed both of their opponents so definitely uh, showing a little bit cleaner numbers there on the side of Rogue but, you know, this is anybody's game. As you said, Necrolite has been playing really well. And if they bring their A game and Lightning T is able to get a little bit of an edge, they can definitely bring the pain to this robot lineup. Yeah, I mean, it's a best of five. So they've got a few extra chances to do just that. And I really, you know, you're right. They've had a few rough spots. We'll have to see, though, how it plays into this. They've had a hard... Uh, path to get to this place and actually so has Rogue and both of these teams have really impressed Rogue of course though they've been absolutely flawless let's take a look at how these guys have performed and talk a little bit about it because they've just you know they they unfortunately didn't make it to live finals but they were so close making it into challenge battles playing very well coming out from challengers and actually getting nine points in the Bangalore 8 in just those three week span, which is pretty impressive. I mean, it, it's a lot to get those points. It was a hard feat to even get close or get in shot of trying to get to that point. Uh, and Rogue did it. And this roster has stayed the same. They've added a new sub in Stormy Cross and uh, looking to continue that, that run. And, and as of course, they're going to be in the Bangalore 8, looking to try to get a win here tonight. Yeah, and just for clarification, uh, Stormy Cross is not on this roster for the Vis Pro. He is on the roster still for the Vainglory 8 tournament. Uh, but it will be Sibs as the backup player for Rogue right now. Mm, that's right. Uh, however, however, uh, they did play with Sibs last night as a sub. He did sub in for Evol. But today it is Hammy, Evol, and Pawn. So it is their three starters who have really been the ones that gave them uh, the success to get as far as they have. They really have, and these guys have started to build that synergy over time. And, of course, you know, we got to talk a little bit about these players. So who's really that X factor coming into the night's matchup? I really want to lean it over to Pond. The original having him on this team has really been an absolutely huge game changer for Rogue. He brings a uh, slightly off meta hero pool to the jungle, which makes it sometimes pretty difficult to uh, ban him out of a comfort. Now, Celeste, we have seen a little more as of recently come into that jungle position, um, but he also obviously brings in the Rhyme, uh, can bring that Glaive into the jungle, and he just, uh, you know, it's, it's not always things that people are comfortable playing against. You're absolutely right. He's really been probably the most creative jungler, but definitely not short of being also one of the most aggressive ones. Uh, he's he's made a name for himself recently, both in challengers, challenge battles, and here in Vispro, as just eat, no matter what he's playing, to go in very aggressively. And his team's done such a great job supporting him in that endeavor. Uh, and that's how they've really been able to get some of those decisive wins coming into here. Well, we are just about ready to get going. It looks like we're ready to start the draft. So let's get right into the it today. The draft begins. Uh, as we'll see a rogue jump in here on A side to get that first ban. And 
of course, we've pretty much seen consistently the Grace, Catherine, Lyras have been those either two heroes banned and that first pick. Yeah, it's definitely the most common ban phase that we see is that one of those healers and the Catherine, every once in a while a team will reach off and ban away something to try to make sure that they get their fair pick mm. of the healers. But that is uh, that is Rogue locking in Kroll first. So Lyra is available now if the side of Necrolite decides. To and I really it. like this pick because Lyra doesn't really quite have the same aggression uh, that you're going to get from Grace or Catherine. So with them off the board, Cruel is going to be able to get into these fights and live a long time. There's a, also, when you give them Lyra, you already know there's not going to be that annoying crowd control that comes from Grace and Catherine that you have to contend with. Uh, Celeste is going to be the next band for Necrolite, but they need to be careful here. On the originals, Cruel manages to even be painful early game. Yeah, Kroll is definitely in a uh, pretty interesting spot this patch. I think picking him up first is a little bit risky. He does play really well into the Crystal Mage jungle meta right now, uh, with the exception of maybe Scarf, just due to that goop. But uh, definitely still playable, and as the game transitions on, he will lower the damage that Scarf can do. But a quick answer of Ringo and Lance yeah, for the side of Rogue. This is a perfect cruel composition, and you know, short of the Scarf's damage, I haven't seen anything come out of Necrolite to stop this. They need some crowd control here. Uh, Glay, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Cruel is going to be really difficult. He's going to want to peel on you, and you need to have some peel for that Scarf. Otherwise, the Goop will slow Cruel down, but it's not going to be enough to prevent him from getting onto the Scarf and deleting him. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, definitely a one situation there. Um, it is going to be coming down to what the last pickup is here for the side of Necrolite. Obviously, we have the Scarf locked in, so we're going to be looking for something weapon. And uh, oh. I think FPG could be looking into possibly a Glaive or maybe even go into a Kestrel just to try to get some of that, uh, obviously, weapon damage split up. And it is going to be the Glaive. And uh, I do think this is probably the best pick into the, the Ringo Kroll Lance combination. Um, just because, obviously, with the Kroll, there's a chance this Ringo could go CP. And Glaive's higher uh, health pool will just give him more survivability when that Hellfire Brew comes in. Whereas uh, Kestrel's obviously going to very likely be one-shot by that ability, so... That is absolutely true. I mean, Kestrel had some advantages there with the active camel to stop the engage from Accrual. But ultimately, you just need to use Glaive correctly for that peel, and you should get the same effect. You know, you just keep that Scarf alive. Glaive definitely is going to be able to do more, you know... Uh, upfront frontline damage and be actually a good frontline with the Lyra, which is what you kind of needed. If you had gone with the Kestrel, you would have had such a squishy frontline and a squishy backline that I really just think Rogue would have run right over you. Yeah, it definitely would have made it an incredibly difficult situation. Again, just it would be a super squishy composi uh, composition to put together. Uh, I think Glaive has some more survivability and dueling capability into the Krull and the Ringo. Uh, however, we obviously won't have that active camo trap that the Kestrel could have fallen back on. Yeah, that that's the only advantage that really Kestrel would have been able to bring into the Cruel. But I think you like you said it perfectly. You need to be careful. You need to have that extra health and, and tankiness going into this composition if you want to make it out alive. I still think the Rogue's really strong draft. And, you know, we see all too often teams just rely on that first pick healer, but uh, Rogue has been very creative in their draft style coming into this pro. Yeah, they absolutely have. And I think that first pick Kroll obviously can be pretty risky, but when it's in the hands upon the original, it feels like a uh, pretty strong, comfortable pick as well. So uh, as Rogue is uh, getting ready to get into this game with Necrolite, uh, it's just uh, it's going to come down to the positioning of Scarf and if Lyra can pr uh, bring good disengages when the Kroll tries to come in, use that Bright Bulwark at an accurate time, block his heavy engagement, and then try to poke some damage out. No, you're absolutely right. It's going to be really critical with the lack of stuns that they have on this team. Uh, positioning and repositioning uh, and preventing the Kroll from getting on top of the Scarf, that's going to be absolutely the most par uh, paramount. A task and it's going to be hard uh, i i'm kind of worried for necrolite here uh seeing how this is they really have to play a much more perfect game with fewer mistakes than rogue does with that though we are going to get into game number one so everybody i'm going to kick it over to our casters to get us into all the action denominate and of course tasty bacon
All right, thank you very much, Dragonborn Denomine. This is going to be an exciting one for sure. Both the Lance Kroll Glaive and Lyra, a lot of area control, a lot of lockdown between those four heroes, and it's going to be all about keeping your late game hyper carry safe. We'll see which team is going to have greater success at that as we see the uh, initial start. Not really too, too much that's out of the ordinary, but standing solo is going to be looking for a little bit of a steal here on these double backs. Yeah, he is going to be looking for it, and he does secure one of them. Uh, Pond turns his attention, but uh, Lance is coming up from behind Bacon, and Pond's going to secure the rest of his farm. So uh, Stan Solo just going to try to make it out of here safely. That root's down for a while. Yeah, using the root of not connecting with it means that Stan's going to actually be confident enough to try and steal away this tree, and he's going to get it taking away two of these jungle monsters away from Pond the original. Again, it's not a you know a massive advantage to be found off that, but every little bit counts. And now with Scarf rotating over, they have that level advantage. You can see Lightning T being level two. They can look for a fight here. It's going to be Hammy rotating down low, but Pond is already dead. No, Pond stayed alive. Got that Spectral Smite in order to find the first blood. Does end up falling, but it ends up with that extra little gold going over the way of upon the original on this crawl. It's going to be evened out a bit, though, by the camps that were stolen away and that ancient treant going the way of NRG. Yeah, and it has to feel good once you've had so much of your back farm stolen to get that first blood and kind of make up a little bit for it, especially being on the crawl who really needs to get these items built to uh, be a big threat. Um, I'm interested to see which route Hammy goes is really who I want to focus my attention on right now. Uh, he is going to go the crystal, actually. So he did return and shop, and he is going to go that crystal route. Um, I think it is a little risky with the Lyra, obviously. You can block that damage. It's going to prevent that burning tick from coming out. And then, obviously, the Imperial Sigil can be used then to heal somebody up. So I almost uh, think I would have liked to see Rogue go into a double weapon composition instead. It did receive some nerfs, but definitely still doable. But now Rogue finds Stan Solo. Yeah, Stanzel is going to be able to dodge out the Impale, but he's taking a lot of damage from this Krull. Smite comes down. It's only going to drop Stan into about half health, so he's going to be a okay to walk on out of there. But this is still some jungle being stolen away by the side of Rogue, and they're going to get themselves the Ancient Treant. So one Ancient Treant apiece, one kill apiece. Everything's uh, coming up pretty even throughout this early game. You can see the gold dead even, 6.4, 6.5 right around that area for each team. And uh, with FPG in the lane on this Glaive, we're obviously going to be going for a weapon build, whereas Hammy is looking for a crystal build on the Ringo. Yeah, and the crystal build definitely brings a uh, little bit different of a play style. You're obviously looking for either a good engagement with that Hellfire Brew, or you're looking uh, just to finish off that low health target as it does have 100% pierce. So uh, reflex blocks towards the level uh, six mark for the laners will be pretty important for Lightning T and uh, FPG. Yeah, one of the issues I've always had with the Crystal Kroll is if you just buy a reflex block and a... Um, I just completely drew a blank on the, the item. And uh, uh, Slumbering so, Husk. Yeah, Slumbering Husk. Oh, that's, that's so frustrating. It's been a little while since I've casted. <laughs> it's been a few weeks since I've, I've been casting Vainglory. I've been mostly on the desk. But yeah, the Slumbering Husk and Reflex Block, you get those two items, and you can pretty much deal with a CP Ringo no matter what. You let the first uh, Hellfire Brew hit you, your Slumbering Husk soaks up pretty much the entirety of it, and then you just Reflex Block the second one. You will take a little bit of that burn damage from the first uh, Hellfire Brew, but... You just you don't take any of that burst damage and it can just be such a massive counter to that hero in just two items then you add a lyra into the mix and you can just heal it up and it can be really difficult for hammy to make any of his damage actually stick if the side of rogue isn't careful yeah and looking at fpg on this glaive he obviously will be spending most of his time in the lane with hammy he actually has a pretty useful tool if he's able to use that afterburn to get into hammy uh, it can be used to disrupt that Hellfire Brew as well, as the Afterburn is so incredibly quick. But uh, obviously, you know, Rogue is a team that we've really seen for quite some time, especially once they picked up upon the original. They've really just had 
uh, pretty great synergy with each other and have been able to pull off things that we really don't expect to see from other teams. But Rogue finds a way to make it work, and it's really impressive to me. So, uh, you know, obviously Lightning T now level six. He has the uh, fourth point into the Spitfire as opposed to going into the ultimate. But he also went with the Eve of Harvest first, which I'm not sure into a curl is what I like. I probably would have wanted to see a Frostburn go on. Yeah, it's uh, the, the Frostburn would have been very important to pick up against a curl, but because they haven't really been fighting, there hasn't been a whole lot of skirmishing, it's not as important to rush. And so I, I think it might be okay with not getting the Frostburn here uh, to start things off. You know, just rely on the slow that's going to come out from potentially from the Lyra, you know, from the Goop. You ha There's ways to land slows without having to rely on the Frostburn. And so because of the lack of skirmishing, it's not really going to hurt the side of energy at all. Uh, the, the one thing that is going to be curious will be the lack of the ultimate from Lightning T. I know this is something we used to see you know, way back in the day, was players actually completely ignoring the Scarf ultimate. It's not something that you can really do that much anymore, but early on, well, they're not gonna have it here in this fight, and it maybe could have turned that one around, but upon the original, Nice afterburn from FPG in order to dodge away from that from Hell's Heart. No one's going to go down, but Lightning T, he's very low. He's not going to just narrowly avoid falling to that tree in the back. Pawn, you know, the side from Rogue, they get a little bit of an edge here, being able to now continue to look for this fight because they are very, very healthy, and Pawn took away that middle tree in. Yeah, getting that curl topped off was really detrimental for them getting back into the lane. And uh, obviously, Hammy low on energy, that is one difficulty of the Crystal Ringo, especially in the early game, is that his energy management is pretty poor, uh, especially since you're spamming that Twirling Silver as frequently as you can to get those the Crystal Power on your basic attacks. And that's really your lane clear on this Ringo. So up mm -hmm. until we get another couple items built out, it'll probably be a uh, Halcyon Chargers for his Tier 3 boots, I would expect. It gives you that additional cooldown as well as the energy regeneration and that very long burst speed on the boots so uh, definitely exciting to see what hammy is going to go into next that shatter glass finished first is going to give him a huge burst of damage on the achilles heel and the hellfire brew though yeah i really like the uh, shatter glass rush on cp ring like if you're gonna go cp ringo the shatter glass first item i think is the way to go just get that big burst of damage that that's your entire build just focusing on burst so get as much of it as you possibly can. Uh, and so with that item completed, as you mentioned, you know they're not really going to be able to engage just yet because of the energy issues that Ringo is going to have. But he's obviously just going to recall it back to base, reset all that, get himself the alternating current so that he'll be able to have a little bit of extra sustained damage through the fights. You know, it's not going to be just the Hellfire Brew that causes damage. I really like that item pickup as well. And but. Right now, NRG gonna get some good chip damage on this turret, taking it down to about half health. You know, they have a pretty solid siege, just with the fact that they have a scarf. You, putting a scarf on a team means your siege is all it's just automatically that much better. And against a Ringo Kroll, like that's not the greatest wave clear in existence. Yeah, it's definitely not the greatest wave clear. And obviously, Scarf has an incredible amount of pushing power onto those objectives. So when Hammy's not in the lane, it is definitely a big risk for the side of Rogue. Uh, as we mentioned, that alternating current pickup for this Ringo, though, I do really like this item on Ringo, especially if you pick up the uh, Broken Myth to go with it, because it will scale up that basic attack damage that you get every other attack from the alternating current, as well as will ramp up that damage that you get naturally from the Twirling Silver, and it does allow Ringo to have some pretty strong damage between the use of Hellfire Brew. Early infusion getting picked up there by Hammy as well, so maybe Rogue gonna be looking for a fight. Oh, they get the stun on to the Scarf. Lightning T is gonna be burning down and falling. That's the combo that you have to be so worried about as the side of NRG. They followed up with a second kill. Pawn, he still wants more, but with just turret raining down onto him, they're going to back off, take the victory, and get themselves over to the gold mine. That combo, though, was devastating. Yeah, definitely is incredibly impressive out of Rogue. Again, they're just very in sync and on par with each other. And they're able to pull those really, really complex combination plays off 
And that's really what we saw there in the lane, picking up uh, two kills. Not quite, uh, not quite an ace, but you know, picking up two is definitely good for you, especially when it goes on to Hammy and on upon the original. Uh, Evolve doing a good job with his kill participation and not securing them. Yeah, that was. I mean, that kill, like I said, just setting it up with the impale into the From Hell's heart. Uh, it just locked down Lightning T for so long. Then you have the Hellfire Brew to follow up. And right, now they're getting some good damage onto FPG and standing solo. Again, you you have to respect the damage that can come out of the CP Ringo uh, before you have those defensive items completed. And uh, that's uh, one thing that they're going to be very wary of uh, from Necrolite. Uh, I've been saying NRG all game just because of the tag on Lightning T. I Apologies. do it all the time. But uh, it's... Uh, I, the worst part is, like, I've been looking at the tags and been like, all right, Stand and Solo has the lib tag. That's not who they are, so it's NRG. Like, that's been my train of thought this entire time. But it, it's Necrolite, not NRG, not lib. It is uh, Necrolite, 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 Necrolite. Okay. Should I make be that good mistake now. <laughs> at least once a game, Tasty. You're totally fine. Uh, it is uh, going to be looking at uh, Hammy's build, at least. It looks like we might see an Eve of Harvest come out on this Ringo. Uh, not quite the sheer amount of power, but obviously getting that energy regeneration is huge. And uh, as Lightning T approaches level 12, you know, it's something that uh, I always have to credit you for is that, uh, you know, I you ran the numbers before. Scarf's win rate as the game gets past 18 minutes just gets <laughs> abysmally high. And uh, it's an incredibly aggressive hero. But now Stan Solo's taking quite a bit of damage here in the lane. <laughs> oh, portal to dodge out from Hell's Heart. And that's going to be keeping Stan and Solo alive a little bit longer. Now they're coming up, trying to clear this wave out. Keep Hammy from being able to put too much pressure on this turret. And I want to actually, after this fight, we'll talk about it. But Lightning T going in, he's taking a lot of damage. Hellfire Brew is going to get used, blocked up by Lightning T. Fountain comes out, Pawn, he is going down very, very low. Can they actually find the kill? They can't. It's going to be Pawn who picks up at the kill on FPG. And now Lightning T getting rooted. And if Scarf gets rooted, it's pretty much lights out. Stan and Solo is going to be the target, but they just don't have enough health to go diving underneath the turret to try and finish off that kill. But two kills for zero. Going the way rogue, they're going back under the turret. And this time they want to find this kill, want to get this ace. They're not going to get the ace, but they do get the kill and they don't lose anyone for it. Excellent job by Rogue. Yeah, it's been really impressive by Rogue so far, and they are gonna get that first turret down off the back of those three kills. So really uh, extending the gold lead now, it was fairly close, but now we're sitting at almost a 3,000 gold lead for them. Uh, obviously with the team recalling, there's an opportunity for Lightning T and FPG that they could try to push this turret, but Pawn's coming in. Yeah, Pawn sticking around. There's going to be the Lance coming through as well. Lots of burn damage, but it's not going to be enough to save Lightning T. He does fall, makes the one-for-one -one trade. Still a lot of minions here. FPG may look to take this turret, but it's got to be careful. It's a good amount of damage coming out. They're going to get this turret. Now can they get out, however? FPG, it's a lot looking good for him. He's going to get the heal from standing solo. He's going to find a kill on his way out. Will end up falling, but the trading is just working out rather nicely for the side of Necrolite at the moment. And that's going to be Hammy giving up the chase on standing solo. So turret traded back, a couple of kills going either way. You can see the gold differential is still sitting right around that one and a half thousand mark. Yeah, Hammy, uh, you know, obviously doing quite a bit of damage on the CP Ringo, but looking over at Evol, we have an Echo on this Lance, which is going to be used for that Githian wall. And thanks to the changes for Echo this patch, uh, obviously does have that lower base recharge rate down from 25 seconds to 10. So it does make that ability pretty spammable and really adds to the lockdown. And looking at Pond's build as well, they're really expecting Hammy to be the one that is really going to carry out these fights. Pond is going a very old school build. We've seen this from him a couple times. Uh, you know, a lot of people are going that uh, Tension Bow, Poison Shiv, Breaking Point build on Curl, that very sustainy Assassin style build. Uh, there's a lot of defense and only a Breaking Point, but the Shiver Steel coming out on this Curl, really bringing him back to his roots, just trying to lock somebody down so that Hammy can come through and get those huge chunks of damage in. Yeah, not only that, but it's going to also allow Hammy to stay at range, like stay essentially at max range of this Ringo and really out of harm's way. If you can just keep someone slowed up long enough, 
uh, prevent them from getting anywhere. He doesn't have to chase as far. He doesn't have to go into the middle of the team just to try and chase down someone like Lightning T. He can still stay at range, keep himself safe from FPG. It's uh, it's a really interesting item pick up, one that we haven't we don't see very often. But I'm a big fan of that. I think it is still a very strong item. Uh, I, I think it's a really underutilized item. Uh, is the Shiver Steel, but we'll see if the side of Rogue can make it work. Uh, one other thing I wanted to touch on is Lightning T. Uh, he actually maxed out and overdrove both his Goop and Spitfire before putting a single point into his ultimate. So he's not going to have an, uh, three points in the ultimate here to nominate. Yeah, and I kind of actually like this route into the Krull, obviously, because Krull, once he gets on to somebody, he's going to be pretty much uh, in a pretty confined space already as he's going to be attacking. Uh, so if he's standing in that goop, it is going to allow a lot of damage to start coming through. And uh, obviously the goop being on a quicker cooldown is huge for Scarf because it helps him pr provide a little bit of distance. Hammy now has four offensive items complete. He has the alternating current, Eve, Broken Myth, and Shatter Glass. So he will start ramping up really quickly in the fights. And uh, looking at over FPG, we just have a Sorrow Blade, Tension Bow, and Poison Shiv on this Glaive. So definitely, uh, definitely Hammy just oh, going to go. damage. That's going to be a nice Githian wall double stun. Hellfire Brew comes out onto FPG, and there's nowhere for him to go. Pawn is low, but he's going to be just fine. The Goop gets it lit up. A standing solo, he's getting lit up as well, and he's going to fall. It's just lightning. 1v3, but he's going to pop Hammy right off the bat. He's got a lot of damage on the Scarf, but there's just too much lockdown for him to deal with. That is an ace for Rogue, the first ace of the game, and they're turning their attentions onto the Kraken. Yeah, and right there against the Scarf there at the end, that Echo came through, double, double Githian wall, allowed Pawn to get a bunch of stacks built up pretty easily. Obviously the Frostburn coming in, or the Shiver Seal coming into effect in that last fight as well. Uh, really well played out of Rogue there. They now have an 11 to four lead, still sitting, um, you know, about a 1.5K gold advantage, so nothing huge, but getting this Kraken is gonna be pretty sizable for them. Uh, it's just gonna be about how much Lightning T can bring it down, but FPG, could even come in here and get a steal if Rogue isn't careful. Yeah, they're going to be very, very careful about this. Evol is going very low. They need to be extremely cautious now, especially with standing solo here. PG is going to get stunned up. Kraken gets unleashed by Hammy. Evol's going to take that healing and get right back up to health. And now they can look for this fight. This is devastating for the side of Necrolite. Already one kill. Lightning T is just going to get deleted by Hellfire Brew. FPG last man standing will be able to get out to safety. Maybe that's going to be a root connecting a stun and a triple kill for Hammy. And this is not what they were hoping for off of this play. Yeah, they're going to get a huge push. This turret's going to be down before the Kraken gets to it. It will take a little bit of chunk of that uh, missing percentage of health from that turret being destroyed. But, uh, you know, now the choke point turret's down. This Kraken is still very, very healthy, Bacon, and is now pushing into the base of Necrolite. But Pawn's coming in. Yeah, Pawn lands a stun. The Root follows it up immediately for another kill. Without the Captain there, this could be difficult for the side of NRG. Scarf, obviously, very good at taking down a Kraken. But is it going to be good enough? One crystal turret is down. Kraken very, very low, but they're just going right onto this turret. Rogue wants to finish this game. Pawn's going to get stunned up, but Hammy and the Kraken are onto the Vein Crystal, and this will be Rogue taking game number one. The, the scoreboard doesn't quite show how close this game was throughout the majority of it. It looks like it was one-sided, but you know, it, in the end, it really kind of was, but throughout the majority of this game, Rogue just had that small advantage and they were always able to use that small edge that they had to win out each and every fight. Yeah, looking at the build on this Scarf, unfortunately he never made it to a tier three item. He never got to that point that he was that hyper carry hero that we know he can be, especially not having the frost burn and allowed Rogue to have just too many free engages. But uh, to wrap that game up, we'll be jumping on over to the desk with Dragonborn. Thank you guys, what a match that was. Uh, Rogue, you know, you said it tasty, they looked like it was pretty even with Necrolite until it wasn't. And then all of a sudden, four turrets are eliminated back to back to back. I mean, they just 
completely turned on a switch, but it was really because they were just so coordinated. Day, you saw it. I mean, when there was an impale or a stun, they were constantly combining their abilities together. Hellfire Brew was always being launched perfectly to time up with some crowd control that they were able to do to stop them from disengaging. So you could, you really could never get away from the Hellfire Brew, even if you blocked it, because you were stuck in the middle of so much more additional damage. Yeah, and that was the really neat thing coming out of Rogue here. It was... You either had to get the Chain CC locked down on you constantly, or you had to block the Hellfire Brew. And that is a very, very difficult uh, choice to make, uh, especially with the Echo on that Githian wall. Uh, Evol came through absolutely huge on this game, and Hammy on this Crystal Ringo, it's not something that we see very often. It is a small niche group of players that are able to pull this hero out in the Crystal form and do well on it. And, uh, you know, I really just think Hammy was really impressive this game. I think they all were impressive. Evol was so good on this Lance. And this is one of those times where a team just really understands their composition so well that they don't need to they don't need to draft into something that doesn't make sense they can they can deal with the fact that they're giving lyra a healer that really is is been very very good high win rate when when she's the only healer that gets through uh and they they just know themselves their confidence is so strong right now and if you're necrolite man you just that just feels like an absolute beating right there at the end it definitely does, so it'll be interesting to see what route Rogue and Necrolite both take going into game number two here. Obviously, again, that CP Ringo is something that's not very common, so that is something that Rogue obviously is able to pull out of their pocket from time to time when the draft goes their way, mm -hmm. and uh, getting Pawn onto that Kroll pick was absolutely huge for them as well. Uh, so now that we have Necrolite on the A side, they will have that opportunity to pick up that first power pick on... Uh, on a side with the other two very likely getting banned away but uh you know that offers a lot of counter opportunity for rogue as well yeah and i'll say that you know because of how consistent banning has been rogue was able to play that draft so well they knew that catherine would get banned and grace would get banned those are strong supports into uh, a cruel they also were able to ban away the pedal and then celeste had been banned so a lot of that strong cc was gone i think the issue here is necrolite needed to respect that um and i honestly think even looking at getting something with that crowd control something even like a fin or an Arden, just to stop that cruel from getting in would have been better in this case than even picking up the lyra yeah i i absolutely agree that lyra just didn't have the effect we wanted to see out of her the Bright Bulwark wasn't used timely enough to really prevent a Kroll from making his engages. And then, uh, obviously, once Lance and Kroll were in, it was just so much lockdown. The From Hell's Heart, the Shadows years. Empower Me, the Double Gethian Wall, the Impales that, let me tell you, Evol with those Impales was absolutely amazing. So, uh, you know, I just, again, the coordination out of Rogue is absolutely huge to me. And Necrolite, with no surprise, <laughs> oh, the takes the... that Kroll off the table. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I guess they don't want to first pick it. So you've got to ban it here. Otherwise, we've seen Rogue actually pick it second when they're on B side. Oh, we've seen him pick it first on A side. I mean, we what, have now. <laughs> what more risky situation can you pick a curl in other than picking it on A side? Oh, well, Necrolite's going to get to choose between Grace or Lyra. What do you think they do here, Day? I, I really feel like we've seen Grace perform overall better just because of her heavy engage and crowd control. Yeah, and also the damage reduction that she provides her team with that benediction and divine intervention ability, and then obviously the uh, the chain stun or the uh, AOE stun potential on a Holy Nova if you can get into a good possession position is huge. So uh, I think the Grace is the smarter pickup for hit for them here. Uh, I think there's a lot of heroes that do work well in the Grace that are very much in the realm of Hammy and Pond's hero pool. You could see the Lance come through out of Evol again, but man, an Adagio first pick. That is, uh, I don't think either one of us were really expecting that one, babe. Uh, Dragon? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, that that's something really surprising, but we've seen it play. I mean, I don't know if you guys have been watching EA play, but Elena Daggio is starting to find a place in the meta when the draft goes a certain way. Uh, with Cruel being taken off and no Catherine, that's usually what messes up a, an Adagio a little bit. And what surprises me, though, is you still have a Grace on the board. I could see Adagio being picked. It is a flex pick, but not in the place of giving up a Grace, which they did do, and i not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, definitely not sure how I feel about giving up the Grace. Adagio can be played as that healer or in the lane, obviously a very flexible pick all in his own nature. But uh, I just don't think 
into a grace, he has that same kind of potential. Uh, and it is going to be a glaive band away now for Necrolite as well. So now looking over at the side of Rogue, I think they have a pretty solid choice here where they could pick up that Idris. The glaive has been banned away. You have the grace on your team. The Idris into the Adagio, you know, he's very slow hero overall. It's easy to get those Chakrams down. Obviously, the Idris can also use that Shimmer Strike to get out of the damage zone of that uh, uh, Verse of Judgment. But uh, they do lock in the Scarf instead. And I gotta say, you know, with the conditions, with Cruel not on here, with Glaive taken off, Scarf is a fantastic pick day. And this is all about, like, some of these heroes, people are like, wow, they're really strong. But they're only strong when you've eliminated the counters, when you've planted out in the draft. And right now, I think Rogue is just been, being gifted a much better draft here. Necrolite needs to think about this very strongly. They need to think about how are they going to deal with that Scarf. Because right now, they don't have a strong engage or frontline. Uh, and they have an opportunity to pick it, but they've really got to be serious about it. Vox comes out. Comes out. I think you put the Adagio in Captain Roll Day, and I think you pick something like a jungler that can really get on top of the box, like a Kashka. Yeah, and I think once the Vox was locked in, the Adagio was pretty much guaranteed to go Captain. There's just right. not enough gold in the jungle for an Adagio to be an effective carry. And Adagio is one of the few crystal heroes that doesn't really scale off of level too well. But... Wow, this is uh, this is Rogue locking in a Scarf Ooh. and a Rhyme. And this is upon uh, the original letting you know that uh, Kashka is not something he's afraid of. So they, they almost got, unfortunately, Necrolite got forced into this Kashka pick. They needed something that they could get on top of the Scarf. There was just nothing available after you saw the Glaive and the Catherine and all of that taken away. Uh, and, but Rhyme is so good to deal with that aggression. If you're going to be aggressive trying to come in on a Rhyme... Good luck, man. Yeah, and the one benefit Necrolite has here in this draft is it will very, almost certainly be that double crystal carry. I don't, uh, you know, it is Pond's Rhyme, but I don't expect to see any crazy weapon power jungle rhyme come out. I don't expect to see any weapon power crazy scarf come out. Uh, so it will be a clear situation for the side of Necrolite to build and prioritize that shield pretty early on especially for Kashka, who's right. going to be the one on the front line. This is a ranged captain you have with an assassin, and that is not always the, uh, doesn't always really work out the best because Kashka obviously is an assassin, not very tanky. Being on that front line, she's going to be susceptible to the Holy Nova, to the Spitfire, the Goop, the Winter Spires. It's, it's just not a good situation for Kashka to be in. We have seen Kashka's navigate though. Kashka does get that speed boost. So if out of all of the aggressors that can get in, she's really not stuck to a target. She can move away quickly and actually bait out some of those spires. It's gonna be tricky though. Pond's one of the best rhymes we have ever seen. And he just knows how to position his spires so perfectly, even when you're trying to dodge them. So uh, good luck to a Necrolite here. I do think Rogue has a very strong draft, but we are jumping in to game number two. I'm gonna kick it over to you, Denominate and Tasty Bacon to get us right into the action. All right, so game number two. And it is going to be Rogue with that one game lead. It is best of five, so there is still time for Necrolite to get themselves back into this one, but they need to figure something out quick and see if they can deal with the Scarf Rhyme Grace. It's an extremely durable composition with a, a fairly good mix of, you know, early pressure from the Grace and then that late game powerhouse that is Scarf and Rhyme. However, on the side of Necrolite, they're a little bit more early game focused as they're going to be having the Kashka and the Vox actually uh, just rotating through the jungle and looking to rotate down into the middle of this map here early on, maybe wanting to find an early fight while Scarf and Rhyme aren't quite as strong. Yeah, Rhyme uh, is one of those heroes that can deal with the Kashka in the early game. Obviously, the fortified health is absolutely huge. Um, Pawn actually does has have a weapon blade. I, I don't even really... I'm confused on the clear scenario for that too, because obviously with the crystal bit, the winter spire clear can be absolutely insane, especially if you group up the uh, back treant and then the double camps, you can get that AOE damage down onto all three of them. Um, so it is, it is going to be interesting to see what Pawn does end up going here. If this is some weapon rhyme and they win, I'm going to be super <laughs> impressed, Bacon. <laughs> if this turns out to be weapon rhyme, I'm going to be uh, sending a DM over to Humanist. 
about a quarter of the way through this game so that he could come and enjoy the treat that we would be receiving. But right now, uh, it's up in the lane. This is where standing solo takes a little bit of damage, but is obviously with Sadagio should be fine. They're going to find Lightning T on this Kashka, though. And, uh, you know, again, Grace so strong early on. We'll be keeping Lightning T at bay. However, with two members down there, this is a chance for the side of Necrolite to try and get some damage on to Hammy. But no one's really going to be in too much danger of actually going down. Yeah, nobody's going to be in real danger. And that's the nice thing about this Rhyme and Grace. They provide a very tanky front line. And now uh, Lightning T is trying to use the speed to his advantage to get to the backs. But uh, Rogue has obviously cleared those out. They are now coming back up. So it will be interesting to see what Lightning T gets and doesn't. And Pond doing a very smart job of not attacking that camp, just forcing Lightning T to have to make a decision. But Lightning T made a decision to stick around and abuse the speed advantage he has over upon the original. Steals away both of those back camps, gets oh. the middle treant as well. He just took the entirety of the jungle away from upon the original, right from under his nose. Meanwhile, the FPG has rotated into the jungle for the side of uh, Necrolite and are taking their jungle so that there's nothing available for Pon the original. That is such a smart movement to just duck down into your own jungle. We see often when your jungle's getting invaded, the laner will ro rotate into the opposing jungle, but to have your laner rotate into your own back jungle while you're invading the enemy is just such a smart move. Definitely is, and Evol is getting taken very low here, Bacon. Evol is going to be the first blood. Lightning T gets that kill, and again, the movement speed. Bond the original just can't keep up. Lightning T says, you know what? I'm going to take that kill. I'm not satisfied. I want some more camps out of this as well. Standing so low, he's going to be uh, found out here by Hammy. Hammy's trying to get on Lightning T, but he dodged out. The scoop never got lit on fire. They are going to be able to take that kill, but this has been a very uh, intriguing start to this game. It definitely has been. And, uh, you know, that is the one nice thing about the Kashka into the Rhyme. Yes, the Kashka can't really kill the Rhyme. Uh, and the Rhyme can't really kill the Kashka either. But uh, Kashka can just abuse that movement speed, get past him. We've seen how quickly he was able to get away from Pawn. Took the entirety of his jungle just based off of that movement speed that Kashka gets from her heroic perk. And Pawn gonna try and answer with as much as he can, but he's really only able to get the front minions, the front monsters there in the jungle, and hasn't really been able to catch up to Lightning T. Is gonna be a few CS behind in the early goings, but oh, looks like Necrolite, they want to look for this engaged. Nice rotation over. The stun onto Lightning T, however, he's gonna be taken down so low, not quite low enough to find the kill. Yeah, but it is going to mean that Necrolite cannot look to try and force the issue any longer. Yeah, they definitely can't. And this has been a uh, this has been two things really. This has been a really aggressive game, uh, but at the same time, the aggression has been put more towards just getting to the farm, not even trying to worry about the kills. And uh, that is going to be Lightning T now level six. Yummy Catnip Frenzy is online, and uh, we do have Reflex Blocks coming out of Hammy and Pond the original already, so they are ready to go and ready for Lightning T to come in and block that ability up and try to find some not, return damage. Not just a reflex block on Pond the original, we have a heavy steal. This is a weapon rhyme denominate we are getting treated to here in this semifinal. Yeah, I think it's about time for somebody to text Humanist and be like, hey, get over <laughs> here. But uh, the stun comes through onto Evil. Yeah, Lightning T is actually going to be the one that takes a lot of damage, though, and goes down to this weapon, Rhyme, upon the original, finding himself a kill. You know, if you're going to fall behind in CS, at least find yourself some kills, but he's going to be able to get that one. Wants to look for an invade, but FPG and standing solo will thwart those efforts. Although, the treat did just come up, so Pond's going to say, oh, I'll just take this and be on my way. Yeah, and apparently this is uh, this is Pond's answer to banning away his curl is I'm just going to pick up Ryan and do the same thing. So, uh, you know, this is uh, they're able to win this one. I'm going to be incredibly impressed with Pond and Rogue as a team. Uh, Lightning T does have the aftershock complete that will give him some additional cooldown as well as obviously the burst from that proc. Uh, obviously, we have the fountains available on both sides on the captains now. But uh, you can definitely see there's a little bit more gold in the pocket uh, of 
evol. Uh, not by much, it's fairly even. We've only got about a 700 a total advantage in farm. So not, uh, not anything huge, not anything that uh, either team can really run away with. Uh, if you know, FPG is able to get his build complete, they definitely stand a better chance now that uh, Pawn is obviously going this weapon rhyme. Yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting, to say the least, to see where this build goes. I mean, I'd love to see and like break down where we think he's going to go with it, but weapon rhyme is a little unconventional. It's not exactly something that we are familiar with. Uh, too uh, terribly on the this uh, just in general, I guess. Really, there's uh, he's going to be going for a breaking point first item uh, right now. The gold miner being worked on by Necrolite, but they're going to have to drop this because the members of Rogue are rotating down, and so resets everything. Just kind of backs off, and we'll be going back to the farm game. Yeah, it is, uh, it is definitely going to be the farm game. It's going to be... I, again, we can't really break down what we think Pond's going to do just because it is <laughs> so off meta. I mean, obviously, the breaking point's out. I uh, I would expect to see maybe a tension bow or um, you know maybe some Tyrant's monocle damage. Definitely uh, definitely something off meta. Again, we talked about it at the beginning of this. Is He's uh, got a very off meta niche hero pool. And uh, now we know he can apparently play Rhyme as weapon or crystal power. So uh, we'll uh, see how it goes. Spitfires do hit FPG though. And they're going to be getting some good damage in. This looks like they want to engage fully. Both teams kind of posturing up, but neither side's really committing to it. And it's going to be FPG getting hit a bit there. Dragon's Breath comes out. Only Nova does not connect, but there's going to be the heal being used onto Hammy as they find the first kill. FPG jumps right back in and gets taken down. And now the verse of judgment, a desperation move, not gonna be doing enough. An ace for Rogue as they find themselves the kills. They're gonna start up this gold miner while Hammy pushes in the lane. This is looking very good for them here through the first nine minutes. It is looking very good for them, and I'm almost kind of mad we don't get to see this weapon power rhyme at the Unified Championships. <laughs> <laughs> it just... Wow, it's uh, it's still got me pretty speechless over here. We obviously see uh, a lot of shield prioritized from Pawn from the early game, uh, but now building into some of that armor, looking to maybe go the same route he did on the Krull, just get that breaking point, be a really tanky, annoying nuisance in the front line, add to some of the crowd control your team can provide, and just allow Hammy to do his thing. And uh, now Lightning T's rooted up into the turret. Yeah, he's going to be a uh, root there. Easy kill picked up. Rogue looking to chase this one down. Landing shots on the stand and stole. The goop's going to slow him up. Is it going to be enough for Pond? They're actually focusing on FPG as well. Holy Nova doesn't connect. It's uh, a little bit of a split focus here. Is looking like it may allow them both to get away, but no, stand and solo gets caught by that goop. The fountain has to be used. Here's the Dragon's Breath looking for this kill. They will find it. It's just one more kill, but no FPG. He wants to try and get onto Ryan. It was just a bait. Evil provides the heal and he goes down. Holy Nova is going to come through. That's going to be one kill for Lightning T. That's all he's going to get before giving the ace over to Rogue. And now they could even take another turret off of this. Denomine, not sure if we lost him there, but turret goes down. Ace Buff being standing solo. He needs to be careful, even though the rest of his team was up. If he had started fighting in that wave of ace buff minions, could have actually been very, very bad. But he is just going to be watching Rogue back away. Two turrets suddenly picked up by Rogue, and all of a sudden this gold lead has begun to uh, sh uh, show itself and grow a bit, about 2,000 gold in favor of Rogue. And upon the original, he grabs himself an infusion to go along with this breaking point see how much more work they can make happen here is it's going to be lightning t getting found a little bit not going to be slowed too much though so he's able to get out to safety rogue they look like they're more than happy to start another fight here it's the side of necrolite needs to be careful jumping it onto Hammy, trying to get the kill onto that scarf fpg chasing on the backside but there's so much healing and it's so much damage they do finally find that kill they have not lost any members just yet. The Verse of Judgment is going to come out. Doesn't land a stun and pawn the original. Can this weapon rhyme go to town? Not going to be able to chase anybody down just yet. Finishes off some boots, though. 
tier three boots he has that active if he wants to try and use it but doesn't want to chase into the crystal sentry so it's just one kill a piece one kill a piece and uh sorry to leave you hanging there bacon i had to sneeze and i don't think the stream really wanted to hear it so uh sorry about that but uh you know again pawn has really been doing excellent work on this rhyme 50 and 5 has been able to clean up a lot of these fights that have been extended. I really like that he has gone the tier three boots, uh, the journey boots specifically, and this is what he does on the Crystal Rhyme as well. Obviously, when you damage an enemy hero, uh, that will refresh the cooldown down to 12 seconds from, I believe, 50 or 60. Uh, okay. So obviously, those boots will be off very frequently. It'll allow him to engage in the fight over and over again with those boots, which is going to allow him to keep the gap closed and a allow him to build up these breaking point stacks uh, obviously he has the additional slow in his his kit and um the okay yeah he has the uh <laughs> the root as well when he gets a basic attack down so definitely uh it makes sense what's going on i mean i i, I don't know if it's always going to be the strongest pick but <laughs> it, i it's it's obviously working right now it's it's definitely working well for them they're able to lock up the targets right and now stan and solo has forced to use war treads on himself yeah, and that's that lockdown that they have so many slows. Stan and Solo, he's got nowhere to go. He's just going to drop. Had to use the fountain as well. Lightning T, next target, next kill. There's going to be the heal coming through from Evil. And now they're chasing on FPG. And this slow, this lockdown from the rhyme is just so devastating. Uh, there's one thing I do want to explain about this weapon power rhyme. So rhymes, Frost Guard perk. The way that it works is his basic attacks deal a little bit of bonus damage based on level with crystal power scaling. Uh, and you know, that's where a lot of the fortified health comes from. There's a misconception that he gets fortified health for the all the damage he does with basic attacks. That's not the case. It's only off of the bonus damage. However, his attacks apply the chill effect. And if you attack a target that is already chilled, it applies a 60% slow. So it that it does decay very rapidly over the course of about half a second, but that's still a very strong slow in that moment. And if you have a good amount of attack speed, you can just stick to a target unbelievably well with a weapon power rhyme like that. So that's one of the you know reasons why this weapon power rhyme is something that can actually work in the right situation. Not sure if the nominee had to sneeze again or if he is just my allergies in, are getting in my butt right in now, man. <laughs> awe of the the uh, the rhyme breakdown there, but for now it is going to be Rogue it's looking to put pressure on. Uh, there was a nice little gold miner uh, picked up there by the side of Necrolite, kind of sneaking that a little bit. And that's kind of the, what they have to do, though. They're in this situation where they are behind, but they're not massively behind. You know, it, but they don't know that. Looking up the scoreboard and seeing three to twelve, you feel like you are just in this massive hole. I don't know if they even would realize that they're only about two thousand gold back. You know, they're very much still in this game. If they could just find the target that they need to get onto Hammy right away, take down that scarf before too much healing can come out then they can find ways to win these fights. But that's so much easier said than done when you have someone like a Grace. No Echo on Evil just yet. So once that comes out, it's going to be even more difficult. Right now, it's going to be Evil charging right on in. They're going to get try and get onto Hammy. He blocks the Yummy Cat in a frenzy. Lightning T going to go down low. There's going to be that Dragon's Breath coming through. Can they get the zone to FPG? He is down. And once they get one kill, it's so easy for Rogue to just clean up as they get a second one now. Standing solo gonna try and run away but get spotted by that flare plenty of scout traps and once that slow connects there's nowhere for him to go it is another ace for rogue yeah and this game is just looking much better for them as every fight goes on uh, obviously getting the kraken with only three turrets down there and the way they've been winning these fights there's a lot of potential they could end the game off of this push here 16 minutes in they only have about a 3,000 gold advantage but again, I mean, they've been winning the fight so cleanly that I just don't know what Necrolite has to do. Or at that point in the game, that Rogue is going to be sticking as a three-man group pretty much consistently. And uh, the real win for Necrolite is Rogue either throws or uh, they're able to catch somebody out. But again, they're just sticking together so well. I'm not sure that's a real win condition. Now, two turrets remain. 
Kraken didn't even get hit by any damage from that first turret. It's full health, marching down the lane. Bacon, this could be uh, this could be Rogue taking game number two with this weapon rhyme. It very much could be. I mean, it, again, it's not something that you're gonna pull out every day. It's not something you're gonna pull out all the time, but they are able to make it work. Uh, and, you know, again, for Pond the Original to pull it out, that makes it even less surprising because, you know, he's such a well-known Krull player, and it's... The way he's playing this rhyme, it's almost identical to a Krull. You know, you don't have that big boomerang shot uh, with the From Hell's Heart, but you do still have a nice stun on your ultimate if you can land the skill shot. I mean, it, you know, you're just... But the core concept of the hero, of just rushing in, being this big nuisance, just locking targets down and you know building up your damage over the course of the fight, doing just enough damage to be a threat without by being so tanky that opponents can't focus you. It's extremely similar in play styles for the way Pomni Original plays the Kroll and is playing this rhyme now. And now the echo is out for Evol. Feels like that's going to be the nail in the coffin. It definitely does feel that way, and this is really something that Rogue has been uh, Rogue has been known for is just allow Hammy to be that hyper carry that he he can pull off on so many heroes. Obviously, with the changes to Baron, we've seen uh, a little bit of Baron fall off, or well, almost complete Baron fall off at least. <laughs> uh, but uh, he's also uh, very skilled on the Idris. It fits his play style incredibly well. He's very good at landing down those combos with the Chakrams, the Shimmer Strikes, the uh, the shroud step and uh you know it doesn't it doesn't surprise me that rogue gets away with this kind of play style so much it's basically protect hammy let hammy do his thing pawn is so good at engaging but and again pawn well he's in a little bit of trouble now there comes the dragon's breath the the uh verse of judgment comes out doesn't land any stuns lightning t is going to be the one that gets targeted though hammy is the first to fall this is two kills though for rogue and now they just have to chase down Standing Solo. We've already seen Pawn the Original do this one multiple times. Standing Solo, he knows there's nowhere for him to go. He's going to do his best, just try and delay as long as he can. But it is a fruitless effort. He will just get rooted up constantly, stunned and taken down. Look at the KDA for Pawn the Original on this weapon rhyme. 8, 0, and 10. This has been an unbelievable performance. 100% kill participation on this rhyme, nonetheless. 18 for 18 is uh, definitely a, a beautiful thing to have happen here for Pan. Really making a huge name for himself right now. Uh, FPG has gone a shiver steal even now on Vox to try to keep some distance. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I don't hate it. I definitely by no means hate it, but... Uh, you know, it's. I don't know if Shiver Steel on Vox is really the the greatest item. It does provide you a lot of health. Obviously, we have the War Treads provide a lot more team engage or disengage, just depending how they use it. But uh, upon the original, finding Lightning T here, yeah, getting a lot of damage down. They're standing on the goop, so they're not going to be getting the damage out from that. However, here comes the Dragon's Breath, blocking up the Yummy Cat and Frenzy once again. They found the kill on the FPG. Lightning T can't even run away from a rhyme anymore. That's a terrifying thought. If you are a Kashka that can't run away from a rhyme, uh, it is just really a rough spot to be in. Standing solo, he's going to get chased down by Evol. They're really just going to kind of be preventing the recall as the other two members are in the base now with just one turret left. They're going to actually take a little bit of a, uh, a detour to fight this Crystal Sentry, but now they are on it to the Crystal no or onto the crystal turrets no minions no problem they work right through that pond is so tanky and they are going to finish off this game what a performance from rogue you know it, it's not even you know flexing on their opponents or anything this is just this was a a planned out composition this is something that they clearly had in mind and they executed it extremely well i am very much impressed with upon the original and this weapon power rhyme. Yeah, it was incredibly impressive and obviously 100% kill partici participation is a trophy in its own, especially with a hero that, uh, you know, isn't really known for having like that huge game changing effect. Um, so, you know, absolutely great performance out of Pond here. That is game number two now for Rogue. One game stands between them and a clean victory 
over uh i almost said an rg but it's necrolite uh but uh you know those you know you mentioned it kashka not being able to run away from rhyme terrible thing again that's why i really like these journey boots on pawn but to uh help get us prepared for i believe we have a break ahead of us a, a short break um and then obviously we will be getting into game number three as soon as possible we'll be we'll be heading over to dragonborn thank you guys so much what a matchup that was most specifically you guys hit upon it a hundred percent kill participation weapon l rhyme i mean uh, who thought you'd say that in a sentence in a competitive angler before denomine i i don't want to say it now <laughs> i and have to let's just be clear i mean you do not see a hundred percent kill participation with that many deaths 20 kills by the way uh that's rare unto itself i mean all on its own that's usually that it, this has just been rogues whole strategy this entire season they have been playing like a solid moving unit really coordinated i i'm just i'm absolutely impressed day eh? i know you guys were impressed you were talking about it i have been become very impressed with this roster and how well they've been playing together and i don't want to stop unfortunately necrolite you know if you're a fan of necrolite you want this to stop this is just this is not how you want to start this best of five series and now you're going into uh game three after the break on the ropes yeah, getting into game number three is definitely going to be interesting to see what Necrolite tries to uh, get something to happen here. I, after seeing that, uh, and I mean, Rhyme is already a very off meta pick. I mean, the, even when the Kashka comes out, there's not many people that run that Rhyme, but to pull it out and then go weapon power, very, very impressive. Uh, so, you know, yeah, Dragon, I just, I don't, I don't really see uh, what kind of strategy, um, Necrolite can pull together here to try to outdraft this team because Pawn, you know, if you let the Celeste through, he's obviously going to get that Celeste. If you let the Kroll through, he's going to get on that Kroll. If you ban both of them away, he's apparently just going to run Rhyme on you. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, you're going to have to become more creative. I mean, look, you're going into a, a, a player who's definitely... He beats by a different drum uh, or beats to a different uh, drum beat and he's been doing it very well. We're going to take a quick break, everybody, and let the players get a chance to recoup their thoughts and get ready for the third, which could potentially be our last match of the night. We'll see you guys all after this. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. But let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together.
Welcome back, everybody. We are getting back into the action as we look to jump into game number three of this best of five. And it is between Rogue and Necrolite. Rogue coming in, stunning fashion, taking the first two games and doing it with quite a flair. But now Necrolite is up against the wall. They need to pull out a victory here if they want to keep their hopes alive of making it to their first ever VIS Professional Finals. Uh, as we take a look at this matchup again, day, uh, and we get ready for draft here for game number three. We've seen Necrolite have a good draft in game one, but not quite pull it out. And then, of course, game two, just I, I don't think they were ready for that at all. We certainly weren't. What can they possibly do going into this roster? You, you were kind of going over briefly how they would have to handle the draft, just, just focusing on Pawn. But if you look at the whole big picture, what are some of their options? The whole big picture is for their what they need to do here is if you're obviously not going to be able to ban Han out of his comfort hero pool, then you have to really bait out one of those picks. You have to force him onto one of them and then build a composition that uh, really just handles the best into what the enemy has locked in. Obviously, with Necrolite being back on the B side, they will have that final lock-in pick. Uh, I, I did like the scarf into the curl in the first game. Uh, I just didn't necessarily like the build path. And then once the snowball got rolling, obviously Rogue was able to take it away. Um, but I really just think if you if you went out on the draft on B-side, even if Pawn is on one of those comfort picks, uh, there's a lot of opportunity where you could uh, really take whatever he's got and really almost render it useless. Yeah, that's definitely kind of what they have to plan on doing here. We're going to find out as we look to get into the draft and get this started the draft here. Um, begins. You know, we've really, I, I've been impressed with what Rogue has done. I mean, they've been undefeated so far, and they are looking to make that the case. And that's even more impressive, considering this is now a best of five. Rogue is going to ban their way to grace. I think this is a great move. Catherine's going to come out next. Let's see what they go with the first pick. Yeah, it is uh, going to see what they go, and they do lock mm -hmm. in that curl. So now this is a huge opportunity for the side of Necrolite to run something here that they know can handle well into the curl. Right. Uh, the Grace ban away was smart from Rogue. Obviously, that Holy Nova can do so much work into that curl. But if you're able to go with something that has a very similar kind of play style here, uh, you know, you could go with the Lance. I think the Lance uh, would be great, actually. I, I, <laughs> think the lance would be the most ideal pick for this first spot who the scarf is a little iffy so i think you have to ban away the lyra here you don't want to give away that curl lyra um but i think uh, rogue very likely could ban away the lance I, in that scenario i think you actually ban the lance and then take the lyra because and that's what they're gonna do because you want the it didn't work out for him for game one though it's no, just we've they... already seen this draft and it just doesn't well rogue it had just... lance that game with the cruel and that right. was, yeah, and so now that they That's ban why I wanted Necrolite to take the Lance and ban away the Lyra. Well, I think that, I think that this balances it a little bit, though, for them. I mean, not having Lyra is not a deal breaker if you can get Lance away. I mean, either way, I think Rogue was going to ban Lance. I think the bans would have been the same, just in a different order. It very well, very well could have been. I just, I would have liked to see the first pick be Lance to get that Lance through. Um, so obviously it's the Lance able to reposition curl away from your team. That's really the strong suit. And then again, we talked about it with Evol on that, uh, Lance that, uh, Githian wall echoed just provided so much crowd control that that would really allow the scarf then that time to build up in a fight. So now we see Necrolite burning a lot of time here, trying to decide what they would like to go. Well, they really need to really go. There's really not a whole lot left on the table that's that's useful. Well, the Arden still is a pretty solid support. I think you have to go with the Arden. You don't want to give the Arden over to the side of Rogue because, first of all, Evol is a godly Arden, mm. and Cruel and Arden do have some synergy. And yeah, so this I, they don't have to go Arden here, but they I feel like Arden could be the best support that or a fortress to help like as far as be aggressive. But it's going to be the Arden, and I think that that's a miss by Necrolite here to not take that Arden and and, and give themselves uh, a little bit better of a support. Now they're really stuck with I think the bottom of the barrel. Uh, they they really are, and that's really why I would like to see that Lance come through early. I agree. We now have a Kroll and a Celeste with an Arden, and that is a very scary thing to be going on, uh, especially when that Kroll is going into the hands of Pond the original. Gwen we haven't seen too much. She does have some usefulness here. Obviously, that Skedaddle, if you do get ganked by that From Hell's Heart, you can Skedaddle out of it. Uh, and then obviously the Ace is high stun, but a Flicker comes out, 
and uh, I'm just yeah. I'm, this I'm is... not sure this draft is the is the the winning B side draft here. No, you're absolutely right by by the lance. By the way, I mean. I do not know why you first pick Scarf into a Cruel when you could have, you know, saved a jungle pick for Petal. You could have gone Lance, banned a Lyra, and then still go Gwen and then pick up or, or or pick a support or uh, yeah, you could still go Gwen and then pick Petal at the end. I mean, you could have done so many different things here. Uh, I guess Necrolite just feels like this is what they can do to win the game. Looking at it, I mean, the only thing Flicker really is going to be great at is just being able to get kind of behind, you know, get around Cruel or Arden to try to lock down that Celeste, taking Celeste out of the fight early. Yeah, that's definitely what they're going to be looking for. It's just, it's going to be incredibly difficult. We have to see a really good Mooncloak come out uh, from this Flicker if we want to see these fights go the way of Necrolite. And Necrolite, uh, you know, with this Flicker, Flicker to me is very similar to the Kestrel. Whoever wins the vision game wins when that Kestrel or Flicker is in play. If you're Flicker and you have your vision everywhere and the enemy doesn't have any of their own down, you've done a good job clearing it out. Flicker can be a incredibly deadly hero to play, similar to how that uh, Crystal Kestrel, if she has free roam of the map, then she's really the most potent uh, CP jungler you can imagine. So it's it's going to be about the vision here, and we have to get a good engagement with this flicker if we want to see anything come out of these fights. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's going to be pivotal. We've seen flicker play work. It can be surprising. It can be hard sometimes to anticipate it. And I think the element of surprise now uh, is what you're going to see Necrolite have to hinge entirely upon. But the margin of error is so small. It's going to be... Very difficult uh, to deal with it, especially how confident uh, Pond the Original is right now. He's just coming really hot off a great game, and he's he's just going to want to continue to be that aggressive jungler with this uh, Cruel. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to see Hammy get on this Celeste, but, you know, we're getting ready to get into this game. I do want to lean on the side of Rogue here, but if Stan and Solo can impress me with this flicker play, there definitely is still some potential for Necrolite to win this one. All right. Well, we're going to find out as we jump into game number three. This is all on the line for Necrolite. Can they make it happen? We'll find out right now. I kick it over to my casters, Denominate and Tasty Bacon. Okay, Denominate, this could be it. The This could be the final game of the semifinals if Rogue is able to take this one. They have a very, very strong composition. Comfort picks for them. Meanwhile, it's a little bit, a little bit unconventional over on the side of Necrolite. And you, maybe that's what they need to get a win over Rogue is to just pull, you know, a rabbit out of the hat and that make something unexpected happen. And they're going to be starting off with this duo jungle clear. Both sides actually committing to getting a little bit extra gold onto both of their carries. Me a little bit worried about this flicker maybe coming in to try and steal this camp, but it's not going to make the attempt. Will just be able to stealth himself up to the lane. Meanwhile, Lightning T and FPG, they finish off their jungle clear. They get to this ancient tree in time to stop that from going over without a fight. Yeah, and this is, uh, you know, we really have to see the aggression come out early. Uh, like that early mid game is where Flicker can be really just a devastating hero as they go in on Hammy, not quite able to find anything, but Hammy with a good return core collapse. Uh, yes, yeah, decent damage there, but not going to be anywhere near enough to uh, you know, find any sort of pressure looking for a kill or anything like that. So uh, the, the Flicker Gwen is an interesting duo here in the lane. Obviously, Flicker can set up some really interesting plays throughout the early game. He's going to be actually going into the backs, looking to find anything here. But no one's home because of the fact that Pawn the Original is invading Lightning T, trying to steal away some camps there. He gets the uh, healer, but is not going to get these doubles. Meanwhile, Stan and Solo is going to be in the enemy back, stealing away their camp. So this is actually really nice from the side of Necrolite. A pretty solid start. They are going to lose out on a couple of camps there as upon the original does take both treants in the Necrolite jungle, but he is going to miss out on both of his backs. Maybe a little bit more if uh, Stan and Solo decides to go aggressive here, but now he's just going to watch and provide information for his team. Yeah, that's one of the really useful things of Flicker is you can jump in and out of those bushes, collect a lot of easy vision without actually spending money on it. 
And, uh, you know, in the early game, the team's not really going to know that you're there. Obviously, Evo not going to buy too much vision early because he wants to get that fountain online as quickly as possible. It will be about... Uh... Oh, hold on here. That's some big fighting up in the lane. Pawn is the one who's going low, but Stan and Solo is the one who will fall. Three on two, just the numbers game not working out in favor of Necrolite. And instead, it will be Rogue with the first blood once again. Pawn just body blocking the Spitfire, making sure that he's able to secure that Treant. And obviously, just going to be healing right back up. So a good start for Rogue once again. Yeah, and that's really been the story of this series so far, is Rogue is able to, even when they have the later game composition, they're really able to hold out that early game incredibly well. Uh, if Lightning T is able to get somewhere on this Scarf, uh, ideally we'd see the Frostburn come out first this time around, just because Kroll was so safe making the engagements earlier because there wasn't that same level of slow potential. Um, he was able to get into the back line, get the stacks down, prevent a lot of that incoming damage. So getting Kroll in a position where to commit to a fight, he has to commit a lot of health loss. That's really what Necrolite has to do here. Or when the Mooncloak comes out of Stan and Solo, you could just get to that back line and blow Hammy up if there's no vision down. All right. So we'll see if they're going to be able to make that happen. As, uh, right now, it's just... You know, not much of a gold difference, but it is going to be FPG getting himself that tier 3 item, that tension bow, that early burst chunk damage that this Gwen can do. They haven't really tried to make much use of Sand and Soul on this flicker. You know, he has that Dragon Blood contract, but they haven't really, you know, gone in, gotten that big burst down that can try and push someone out of lane. They need to be careful here. Pawn is up in the lane, and they are actually just going to engage right on the Lightning T as he shows himself nearly going down but manages to stay alive pond takes a little bit of damage thanks to those buck shots but uh in the end it looks like it is just gonna be both members able to walk away pond however taking up an aggressive position in the enemy jungle lightning t he's aware of this throws out that spitfire to check for him he's gonna just have his suspicions confirmed but there's not much he can do to stop pond from stealing away these jungle camps the entirety of rogue rotating down to make sure that they steal those away. Pond, again, you, you know, got to be wary of the damage that can come out of the Gwen, but it's not going to be enough to find a kill yet. Yeah, not, not quite enough, but that is a first blood resulting for the side of uh, for the side of Rogue. Happened a little bit earlier, but uh, just have to make note of that 200 bonus gold going on to this Kroll, who has been such a nuisance. And now standing solo, he might be getting caught out here. Yeah, could be in a bit of trouble, is going to be in a bit of trouble as he goes down. FPG and Lightning T so close to taking down that turret. Oh, Solar Storm so close to taking down FPG. But both will remain standing for the time being. I mean, a, a slight breeze will knock over that turret that Rogue is defending. But and for now, they will be able to prevent their opponents from getting that extra little boost of gold. Yeah, and preventing that gold is absolutely huge, especially with the Scarf on the enemy team. Uh, Scarf, obviously, really dependent on gold. Uh, so, realistically, the jungle isn't the best place for a Scarf as far as getting your build online. But he does benefit pretty well off of getting those levels early as well. So that's really what works out for him in that jungle. Uh, getting those cooldowns from putting your points in, uh, as well as just the damage that comes out of the Spitfire naturally can be huge. That turret is destroyed. Stan and Solo goes in and gets it down. So uh, getting a little bit of gold in their pockets, but uh, overall still a very even game, Bacon. And as it goes on in this Celeste, Arden, and Kroll are all later game heroes, I, I definitely think that Rogue has got to be the house favorite here to win. Yeah, definitely. They uh, are looking like the stronger team this series, but you know, with that extra little bit of uh, gold that we're able to pick up, Lightning T did finish off his Eve of Harvest. That could be a nice power spike for the Scarf. Able to survive a little bit longer in some fights, perhaps, but once again, against a Kroll and a Scarf not going for that Frostburn just feels a little bit strange. Obviously, when you have a Flicker and a Gwen, you have plenty of slows, but it's still, you know, typically, you want to just make sure, like, without a doubt, 100%, you have a slow 
on this curl at all times. So we'll see how this is going to work out. Some good vision starting to get put down by both sides. You see Evol is going to be going towards a contraption as he does have himself that flare gun in the inventory. And once that's complete, it's going to make Stan Solo's job that much more difficult. It absolutely will. And, you know, not only does the Frostburn for Scarf provide a lot of slow, it's also a lot more crystal power than this Eve of Harvest. So uh, really uh, interesting build path coming out of Lightning T. It didn't work out game number one. Maybe it will the second time around. But Hammy has opted to go the Frostburn, now working into the Eve of Harvest second item. And upon the original with the breaking point completed, um, I think they're going to go that just really defensive curl, really be a nuisance, and uh, really just try to get Hammy to be that hyper carry that he's really building himself a name as. Uh, FPG does have the tension bow and the poison shiv. Um, into a curl, uh, it's, it's a little difficult because you're going to want to find your damage onto the squishy Hammy in the back line. I just don't know that uh, you know the tension bow poison shiv is, is really the best route here. Uh, I think you really need some more upfront damage. Try to burst Hammy down, and from then you can, uh, you know, try to deal with the curl, slow him up, get that CC down, and then follow up with some huge damage. Love that curl, jumping on in, getting a little bit of damage on the standing solo, but he's gonna be deterred by those slows. FPG, gotta be careful if you eat any uh, Helios. They're not very durable on this Gwen. Now they're going to be looking to go in again. The Gauntlet is going to split the team a bit, but that's a nice reflex block to get out. Oh, from Hell's Heart splits the uprights on the original. It is low enough that he's going to have to back off from here. Spitfire's not quite connecting, and it's going to allow Rogue to maybe try and stick around, although are they going to spot Stan Solo here? They do. It's going to take a little bit more damage, but without having Pond the original there, I just don't feel like they're comfortable enough trying to commit and look for a kill. They used all their ultimates there and weren't able to find anything. And so a nice job by Necrolite just to survive. Yeah, a really good job by Necrolite and they should be able to rotate up in time to save this turret. Obviously, as Celeste gets later and later in this game, she is going to be a very huge objective pushing hero. We already see it there, even with the FPG, but Pawn comes in deep. And goes a little bit too deep and doesn't get the kill on the FPG. Lightning T and Stan and Solo rotating around and they put their first kill on the board. That was a very aggressive play from Pond. I like the aggressive play call there, but not able to make it work. Is uh, you know, perhaps going to put a damper on any future calls like that. However, right now, Hammy is going to be in a little bit of trouble. Stan and Solo, FPG is rotating over as well, but Stan and Solo has to use that fountain. Crystal Sentry trying to get involved, but is going to fall. They've bought enough time for Pond the Original to return. They get the kill. It's actually Evil that secures that one. So the Solar Storm goes wide, but there's going to be From Hell's Heart connecting. Gauntlet doesn't land a stun, doesn't need to, as Pawn takes down the Scarf. And now FPG, the try and run, has that movement speed that will be able to get him out to safety and prevent an ace from going over. Yeah, and that's really huge for them. And now Rogue is going to turn their attention uh, over to the gold mine, not wasting any more time chasing up on a PG. So uh, they will be starting to even out this gold. Uh, Pond has two reflex blocks in his pocket. They're both on cooldown because you can't have duplicate items. So I'm not uh, not 100 percent sure what's going on there, Bacon. Uh, but <laughs> Hammy has completed the clockwork and is really going to be able to spam those heliogenesis and provide a uh, a whole lot of zoning potential. But Evil making it out by the skin of his teeth there. And now Pond's coming in deep. Yeah, the, the second reflex block is just because he is going to be going for an Aegis. So wants to have the Aegis and the reflex block. But there, they're going to be finding some good damage on the stand in solo. Or, or maybe he's just going to go double Aegis. That could actually be another idea here. Because, uh, you know, looking at it, I was thinking, you know, the second Aegis, re you know, reflex blocks aren't really... What does he have to block other than the ace is high but lightning oh, t no. he's gonna be in a lot of trouble here and there's the from hell's heart it doesn't get blocked and they're gonna take him down hamby was extremely low but managed to stay alive pawn is gonna find standing solo now he has the slows doesn't get the kill with the spectral smite and with that standing solo will be able to get himself out to safety but this is again starting to look really good for the side of rogue as they work on this first turret, they take that turret down, even up the turret score, and uh, get themselves 
right back in this one as far as the gold is concerned. Yeah, it's definitely starting to uh, look like the Kroll is coming online. Uh, as you mentioned, he has the Aegis and the Reflex block now, so that is uh, obviously what he was going for. I think I would have uh, liked to see the Aegis come out before the double yeah, exactly. Reflex block, <laughs> just because it provides you that additional defense as well as the block. But uh, overall, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't worked out badly for them. Hammy is going into a fourth offensive item, so sticking to that, protect Hammy and we'll win the game kind of scenario. Uh, Evol carrying a ton of vision, though. We have scout traps, flares, and a contraption in inventory all at once. And, uh, you know, they've really just uh, started to pull together. And this is the part of the game where uh, Rogue can really pick whatever fight they want and very likely walk away with it. And that being said, inside of Necrolite, they are scaling up with a scarf. He's looking for his third offensive item. And they were able to just sneak that gold miner, even with vision in the gold mine pit. Uh, there was just they chose their timing for it properly and were able to take the down. We've seen them do that a couple of times this series, as they and you have some really good objective focus when they need to, but they just haven't been able to string together. You know those the decisions they've made around the objectives. They haven't been able to make those same decisions around team fights, and that's really what they're going to have to do to try and pick up a game here against Rogue and avoid being swept 3-0 in this semifinal. But at the moment, it's this is going to be their best chance. However, it's not looking great. Yes, the gold is looking good for them, but the fact that they have the Hammy getting to this hyper carry late game stage. You know, something that he's very accustomed to now has been playing exceptionally well in this role. Things can start to look very, very grim. Yeah, they definitely can. And I think we have to give some credit to the fact that Rogue has had this roster for some time now. They've been working on building their synergy and looking over at Necrolite. Like, these are players that have played together in the past, but uh, obviously recently, uh, you know, they've reformed as this team. Lightning T obviously coming off of NRG. Maybe not having quite built that same level level of synergy that maybe they once had. But now 15 minutes into the game, Kraken is on the board. And uh, obviously there's a lot of potential for either of these teams to take it. The Hyper Carry Celeste obviously will bring it down very quickly. Or if Necrolite is able to find anything, Scarf is obviously very good at taking those objectives too. So this is going to be about who can pick a fight here, who can clean up a kill or two, and then push in on that Kraken. And this Kraken is going to be extremely important as we get later and later into this game. Still 6-2 to two on the scoreboard, and it looks like Rogue may be wanting to make a move to get themselves in position for this Kraken at least. Get that commanding vision control that they have been working towards for the majority of this game. They've got vision of this entire central area now. And uh, at any point, if they see a member of ne Necrolite get a little bit too far away, they could try and just start up that Kraken and rush it down. But for now, it, they're going to be giving up that position, allowing Necrolite a chance to get in there. But FPG, ooh, a little bit surprised they didn't pull the trigger. I'm looking for a fight there, but they are just going to be backing away. Yeah, and uh, here comes a, a gauntlet out of Evol. Not any follow from the team on it, though, other than that supernova coming out of Hammy. Um, FPG is going for a fourth offensive item here on... Oh, hold on. We got a slow coming out of Stand Solo. Uh, not going to be a whole lot followed up, though. Yeah, they are going to be just backing over a very strange use of the gauntlet. Not really sure why it was thrown out there, but they uh, are going to be having to wait about a minute before that ability is available again. Let's see if this is going to be an opportunity for Necrolite to try and make something happen, but both teams just playing very passively. It makes sense for Necrolite to be playing passively, obviously on the brink of elimination. You don't want to you know, make take a risk that you don't have to, especially in a game where you might feel like you are behind just because you're down on kills, but they're doing a great job of keeping the gold even, but there's a fight breaking out now. It's going to be a lot of damage off the Lightning T. Ace going to be the first one to fall. Pun is taking a lot from FPG, but it's just not enough, and Hammy is able to just you know, completely turn the tide of this fight and make the members of Necrolite low, force them to have to retreat. A Crystal Sentry is defeated as well.
Rogue a little bit too low to try and start this Kraken, perhaps, but they're gonna go for it anyway. Is is a curl ever really too low to start up Kraken though, Bacon? That's the that's the real question here. And uh, obviously, Hammy taking this very, very quickly. They have to be careful as FPG is coming down. And here is Necrolite. And they're going to be looking for this fight. The Solar Storm Ooh. comes through, finds one kill, and they just take down the second as well. Finish off the Kraken. And this is looking more and more like a 3 0 from Hell's Heart on to Lightning T. Nowhere for him to go. That is an ace as the Kraken was unleashed. Four turrets to work through, but this is a very strong rogue lineup. They're just going to work on this first turret before Kraken even gets there and take that one down. They are in a prime position to close this one out, Denomine. They are absolutely looking in a pretty clean spot here. Obviously, Celeste will be able to take these turrets so incredibly quick uh, that the Kraken shouldn't take too many shots. As long as they don't die here... This is uh, very likely going to be a rogue game. And it's mm. looking very much like it should be, but taking a bit of damage here from Hellsar on the Lightning T. That's going to be turning right back around. They do lose out on one Solar Storm taking FPG. Low FPG, however, is putting up a fight. He finds a second kill. Can they get this ace? It's evil has nowhere to go. Now they can turn their attention to the Kraken. So the game's not quite over yet, but rogue only has one turret left to work through when they are back up yeah only one turret stands between them and a victory it is only at half health and obviously the damage uh coming out of this celeste would be able to take that down very very easily if they're able to find even just one kill in the next fight they really would have the advantage to push as much as they want a uh, little bit overextended there from pond does get him dropped Fairly early on in that fight, he does have the Shiver Steel online, but FPG is coming in here, trying to get this sentry down, trying to find some gold to get into his pockets. They still have a little bit of a net gold lead, uh, but you know, obviously this four item Gwen is very susceptible to incoming damage. Yeah, they have a little bit of a gold lead, but and they are on the verge of dropping this game. They only have one turret remaining, and that's it's rather impressive. That they've been able to keep the gold this close all game because they are definitely they're not winning in any aspect other than the gold which is it's almost bizarre that they have a gold lead given the fact that they are down six kills down so many turrets uh and you know just haven't really been able to find much of anything a nice gauntlet there but it all gets blocked up solar storm comes through that is going to be a lot of damage but can they find a kill aces high connects on the pawn two reflex blocks and he still gets stunned but they find the kill anyway and that is going to be now three on two. Crystal Sentry perhaps going to be the target here instead of ch trying to chase down any kills. One life remaining on that Sentry as Lightning T and San and Solo will both get out alive. Yeah, they'll both make it out alive, and that is going to prevent Rogue from closing this game out. However, uh, you know, obviously Necrolite still in a very dangerous position. They do have to be very, very careful and how they play out this next fight. Lightning T did pick up a infusion is sitting in his pocket, but, uh, you know, sitting, uh, you know, in an uncomfortable spot as Pawn and Evol have just been able to get in his face so frequently. And then Hammy, obviously, sniping down FPG with those Heliogenesis. Will uh, Necrolite be able to get a uh, steal off here? It's From not Hell's looking Heart. good for them. From Hell's Heart was blocked. Standing Solo is in there trying to find the steal that the Solar Storm gets used to secure it. Meanwhile, Pawn is just 1v1 against the Scarf. Takes him down. Nice gauntlet. It's going to get a stun. And that's going to be two kills. Make it a third as the core collapse comes through for the ace. And with one turret remaining, this will be game, set, and match. Rogue taking down Necrolite in a very decisive 3-0 fashion as they were able to control really every game. Even the even this one, again, I'm not quite sure how the members of Necrolite were able to keep this gold from... I mean, look, they're 200 gold, 1 to 200 gold ahead at the end of this game. Somehow, it's that close despite the kills being their favorite, the... the you know, turrets being in favor of Rogue. Everything was going Rogue's way, except the gold is a little strange, but in the end, it doesn't matter because the series 
is 3-0 in favor of Rogue, and they will be moving on to the finals. Yeah, really, really well played. And to help us get into our preparation for tomorrow's games, which will be Immortals versus Rogue, a little bit of a uh, rematch as these teams have played each other several times in the past, both in Vis and obviously in the Vainglory 8. We'll be uh, heading over to Dragonborn and see what he has to say about this Rogue victory. Hey, thank you so much, Denomine. What an exciting matchup, guys, that really, I mean, Rogue has gone undefeated now here at this Pro in the summer season, and they are looking to end their season on a very high note going in, but they're going to have a huge opponent up in front of them, and that opponent is Immortals, who has uh, lost a one or two games, but, you know, still being very dominant in their run here to the Vang and Glory VIS Summer Finals. Uh, so you guys are not going to want to miss the action. We will be getting you guys all the action tomorrow, actually starting at 3 p.m. Pacific. That's 6 p.m. Eastern. So it's a little bit different time, but it is going to be on Saturday. Make sure you guys tune in. We'll be some of the last competitive angler you'll get to see until next week. And next weekend, we start the live Summer Championship. On a quick side note, though, I do want to make sure you guys all know that we do have the registration for the VIS Autumn Seasons registration for Vis Challengers available now. Make sure you guys follow the VIS Twitter, at VIS League, and make sure you go click the link. There's a Google form there, and you'll be able to sign up your team. If you guys have a team or you think you can compete in the top 32 teams and challengers here in North America, well then, by all means, sign up and get ready because it's going to be an awesome autumn season with lots of new challengers making the way. There's going to be some changes. We'll talk about how challengers has changed a little bit from last season once we get closer to that date. So make sure you guys sign up your team as soon as possible. And of course, tune in tomorrow for the conclusion of the VIS summer season. With that, I will say thanks everyone for coming out and watching. We'll see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. Good night. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. Well, let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together.